Hey guys, I have the new Dina Wakely Media Pouring Medium and Cell Creator to share with you today. Ranger had sent me a promo pack of all the things from this release that Dina just came out with to make the pour art. It came with some um, pouring cups that have little measurement lines on them, some sticks to mix the paint, these pouring medium bottles that have a small opening so you could do more precise pouring, and then of course the pouring medium and the Cell Creator. So I'm going to pour in some of the pouring medium into my mixing cups and I'm going to pour it into about the quarter line in the cup because it says um, three parts pouring medium to one part paint and it's hard to measure so I'm just going to eyeball it and then add a drop of the cell creator. Um, the packaging of the cell creator says to add a drop but the amount of cell creator that you add depends on how big cells you get. So I added one drop in the ocean, two drops in the sky, and one drop in the elephant color to see what the different um, sizes of cells that I could get depending on how many drops I used. And then I'm also going to mix up some eggplant in the precision tip bottle. And then you just mix it up and it really doesn't take long for it to mix together. It's really super simple to do. It's just these three things you need, the pouring medium, the cell creator, and paint. And um, pour art is kind of complicated with all the products that you need, the Floetrol and the Butane to make the cells, and this makes it super simple that anyone can do it. So I'm just gonna add my colors, and this is a piece of watercolor paper. You can pour on anything, um, paper, wood, canvas, a journal cover, anything. And then to mix the paint around a little to get more of those cells going, I'm gonna hold the stirring stick almost parallel to the paper and drag it through the paint very, very lightly to get those cells going. I'm gonna put on a pair of gloves to mix the, or to move the paper around um, because it's super sticky and if it gets on your hands, it's kind of hard to get off, especially if it gets on your nails. So um, I would recommend a pair of gloves if you're going to be touching the paint. But if you're using a canvas, you can kind of avoid touching the paint. But because this is paper, it's a little more difficult. And I'm just going to pick up some of that paint that fell onto my cardboard box um, because I don't want to waste any of it. And, um, oh, that's another thing. I recommend um, using a cardboard box or something to pour on because the paint does drip off of your paper or whatever you're pouring on and it makes a bit of a mess. And if you use a box or something you can just pick it up and it'll dry and you can keep using it time after time. So here's where I use some of that eggplant in the um, pouring bottle and I found with this that the less you mix it around, the better it looks. Um, you do have to mix it a little to get those cells going when you pour it um, like this, each paint color by itself. But um, it's one of those things where it's, a, it's kind of addicting to keep mixing it around and playing around with it, but it, it looks better if you just leave it alone. And that's what this one looks like. I got some cells going there. Looks pretty cool. And when you first pour the colors in, they do um, they don't really mix together. Um, you do have to kind of keep in mind what colors you're using because the more you mix it around and the more it moves around, it it, it can, um, the colors can mix and if you're using colors that um, don't play nice on the color wheel you will get mud. So it's important to keep that in mind. 
but you can get some really cool designs if you use colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel or um, three analogous colors. Then I also take the stirring stick and put it on its side and kind of drag that through the paint just to make a little variation. So here's where I call in the non-artist boyfriend to demonstrate how easy this is. So I gave him a quick explanation of how much um, pouring medium to paint and just let him go to town. I let him pick the colors that he wanted and then he mixed in um, the cell creator. He got a little zealous with the cell creator and added quite a few drops, but um, it turned out okay. So we mixed up all the colors that he picked and we're gonna do a dirty pour, which is where you add all the colors you mix into one cup and then you um, hold the paper over top of the cup and then flip it and then you lift the cup up. And he his turned out really cool with the colors that he picked and he got a lot of cells. And he did add a lot of the um, cell, uh, the cell creator. So I'm wondering if that's why he got a lot of those cells. And um, he's adding some of the excess that he had left in the container now. And we were talking about what it looked like. I thought it looked like George Washington over there. And he said it looked like, what did you say it looked like? A dragon or something breathing fire. So that's how simple it is. He did it and his turned out really cool. Okay, I'm gonna do one more pour here. Okay, so for this last pour, I'm gonna use lemon, magenta, eggplant, and buff. Oh, and I forgot to mention, the boyfriend's um, pour colors were cheddar, evergreen, and fuchsia. And yeah, for this one, I'm also gonna do a dirty pour where you pour all the colors into one cup and then um, flip it upside down. And I kind of moved the cup around a little bit, just a little bit before I lifted it up. So it got some very interesting variations. And this is what I was talking about. Um, when you, the less you mess, mess with it, sometimes it looks a little better. Like for instance, I thought this looked really cool when I first poured it and first started moving but then I started messing around with it and when uh, when it was all done I really didn't like it near as much as as like how it looks right here so I should have left it alone but you know I've never done this before so it is a learning curve and I'm sure there'll be many many more pours to come so to get some of that excess off which is a step I should not have taken um, I took another piece of watercolor paper and I held the first one on top of it and kind of drug my paper backwards so that paint would spill onto the paper underneath and um, create like another pour. And the, the paper underneath turned out really cool. It's just that I wasn't that crazy about how the one on top, I mean, it's still cool, but not as cool as when I first did it. So these are the new products. Ranger has them in stock and other companies have them on pre-order. Um, I highly recommend it if you're interested in doing the pour art. It's super, super simple doing it this way. And um, I have a video where I turn some of these pours into embellishments for um, some index card art. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Um, let me know what you guys think of the new products here. Are you going to use them? Do you do poor art? Um, yeah, that kind of stuff. So thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.